Hey there, I'm professional psychic Karen Marie, and this is Psyched Up Sundays for February 26, 2023. Thank you so much for tuning in and spending your valuable time here with me. Thank you to my new subscribers who have joined this channel, and for those of you who have sent donations to support me as well, I really greatly appreciate it. Many, many blessings. May it come back to you tenfold. If you would like to send a tip or a donation to support this channel, I've got the links to my Venmo and my PayPal below this video, so feel free. I want to give a shout out to my daily one minute videos that I post here on this channel, also on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, where I look at the most important transits for the day, in my opinion, draw a tarot card and talk about that. So I keep that all under 59 seconds, so make sure you get your daily dose of what's going on in the skies. I will also be posting separate videos for each sign. For this upcoming week, I'll draw three cards, a recent past card, a right now, and a card for the week ahead. So make sure you check those out. I'll post the links to those below this video once I get them uploaded. Make sure, you, of course, you check out your sun sign, but also your moon sign and your rising sign to give you a full picture of the week ahead for you. All right, so this week it's pretty darn quiet, thankfully. Now that doesn't mean your personal transits uh, won't be affecting you. Uh, I mean, the, the transits won't be affecting you personally, let me put it that way, because we all have our own birth chart or progress chart if you're looking at those and how the transiting planets affect us personally. But overall in the skies, we don't have any squares or oppositions with the major planets this week. So that is like... Ooh, we deserve a little break. So the sun is moving through Pisces. It's at eight degrees of Pisces as I'm recording this. It takes 30 days for the sun to transit a sign. It starts with zero degrees and goes to 29 degrees. So Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. So it can often be a wrap up of karmic lessons. It also can indicate past life. So we can encounter people who we've known in past lives as the sun transits Pisces or have past life flashbacks, or karmic issues rise to the surface as the sun transits this sign. Pisces is two fish, right? One fish is swimming with the divine. It's psychic. It's spiritual. It's receiving downloads. The other fish is swimming along in illusion, delusion, addiction, checking out, fuzzy thinking, wanting to sleep, we can be drawn to spiritual practices and wanting to meditate more or just commune with our divine self or the divine in the universe when the sun is transiting Pisces. And we also may just want to check out, numb ourselves with substances or food or behaviors or activities and just sleep all the time. So we can go either way. And we may experiencing we may experience some of both of these things. Um, all right, so right now on Sunday, we have the moon in Gemini, and Gemini is ruled by Mercury, so when the moon moves through Gemini, its communications are heightened, talking, uh, getting together with others. It's a very social sign. Gemini is the twins. It can also be showing up in signs of duplicity, Jekyll Hyde, energies coming out uh, with the people around you, speaking one thing that's not really the truth, and use your own intuition to determine that. Uh, its ruler is Mercury, which rules our thinking, our mind, so we can be up in our head batting things around extra when the moon is moving through Gemini. Now, the moon in general represents our intuition or our inner realm, so when it's in Gemini, it, we have a tendency to kind of get up in our head instead of in our intuitive body, so we have to set a different concrete effort to stay tuned in to our intuition, not get out of our mind, as it were. One of the interesting aspects that's been going on for the last couple of days is that the Sun in Pisces and Venus in Aries have been traveling in lockstep in a semi-sextile. So today they were traveling, the Sun earlier was at 7 degrees of Pisces, the Venus was at 7 degrees of Aries, yesterday they were both traveling at 6 degrees of each sign. That's, this continues all week long, or at least for the majority of week, towards the end of the week, they separate out a degree, but they're still in a semi-sextile, which is a really beautiful kiss when it comes to illuminating spiritual qualities, psychic abilities, 
and Venus, love and relationships. So this is really, I see Venus as the predominant planet this week. So love of self primarily, self-love, divine love, but also love in relationships and finding love in your life. Like who in your life really shows you unconditional love? I think these are really highlighted and you can really see this clearly. With the moon in Gemini, you may also see the people who are telling you one thing, doing another. So um, tomorrow on Monday, we don't have any major planetary aspects. We just have the moon having some aspects. So I'll talk about that. Um, in the middle of the night at um, 2.24 a.m. And the times that I give you will be Austin, Texas times. And that's central time zone here in the United States. But know that any transit we can feel ahead of time. We can feel them afterwards as well, especially the major planetary aspects that we can definitely feel before and afterwards. Even the moon we can often feel before they make an aspect and afterwards. So just... I always say if you want to begin to learn about transits, pay attention to how you're feeling as the moon moves through a sign and what you notice and observe in your own life and in the world around you. So at 2.24 a.m., the moon in Gemini will be sextiling Venus in Aries. So a sextile is a positive connection. Again, the moon illuminates, gives us intuitive information about love. So that's one of the things you could have some really cool dreams coming up later this evening, early tomorrow morning, um, that have to do with love and relationships. Then at 8.07 a.m., the moon will sextile Jupiter. Now, Venus and Jupiter are the two bene most beneficial planets. They both can bring in good luck. So when the moon is in a sextile with Jupiter, there can be powerful, larger. It also, Jupiter makes things bigger so we can have easier ability to tap into intuition and get intuitive information, easier time connecting spiritually. So both of these, the sextile between the moon and Venus and then the moon and Jupiter are really, really, really nice. And then at 1229 PM, the moon and Gemini will sextile Chiron in Aries, giving us intuition about how we can heal ourselves where we've come in our healing journey, Chiron is the wounded healer. So it brings up, if we can feel triggered, if we have unresolved things that needed to be healed, or we can have a spotlight on areas that we have healed and go, oh, look at that. I used to blah, 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 fill in the blank. But now that didn't even affect me. So you can go two ways. You can get insight into things that you still need to heal, or you can go, oh, look, that didn't even rock my world. Um, and then at 10.20 p.m. Monday the 27th, the moon in Gemini will be conjunct Mars in Gemini. So this is a uh, highlighting of how we take action in the world and where to be putting our energies. Mars represents how we take action in the world, how we put energy into things. And so the moon will give us insight. Are we on the right path? Are we taking action in the right ways in our life? So this is a really beautiful energy. Also on Monday, tomorrow, Saturn moves to 29 degrees of Aquarius. So 29 degrees is a testing point. It's called the anoretic degree. And so any planet at the 29 degree point of any sign is like having the final exam of that sign. So Saturn will move to this 29 degree point, testing us on the lessons that we've been working on Saturn is a teacher and a taskmaster. It's making sure that you're learning something and growing. It's where the boundaries get put up in the universe, the stop sign where we're told no. Saturn can come in and go, nope, can't do that. But Saturn also brings rewards when you've been working hard at something and you have been putting in the time and effort on something. So in this next week, you may find yourself being rewarded in the house wherever you have Aquarius. Aquarius represents humanity. It's the double wavy lines. Aquarius is the maverick. It represents new innovative thinking. It's the upper octave of Mercury. Well, uh, Uranus, which rules Aquarius, is the uh, upper octave. So if you think of what's Mercury, communications, transportation, technology, our phones, our computers, Texting people, messaging, even snail mail, that's all Mercury, short-term travel. Whereas Uranus is 
air travel or uh, international, I mean, um, space travel could be Aquarius or evolved technology like robotics and higher technolo technological um, issues, uh, systems, um, aliens is even Aquarian. So, and in the 11th house is the house that Aquarius rules in the astrological wheel, which is the house of groups, networks. We get together with groups of other people, whether that's your family or your band or your church or your drum circle or your yoga class or wherever you gather with more than one person that is an 11th house activity and Aquarius rules that. So you may have been reassessing who and what you hang out with. Who is your tribe? Have you devoted your energy to your tribe? Or have you found out that the people I'm hanging out with are not my tribe? Have you been pouring too much energy into the people around you and not enough into yourself? Saturn will help you balance out the time that you're putting and you know just your energy, like, are you balancing that all well? And if you've been doing that well, Saturn can really bring rewards. And again, whatever house is ruled by Aquarius in your own personal chart, it's a wrap up of the lessons of that house. So if you want to know more specifics about that and how that might affect you, that's what personal readings um, can can bring you because in my personal sessions which i usually conduct over zoom or the telephone we dive into your birth chart the current transits and how they're affecting you and then we move to tarot do a general reading uh, where we look at what's going on in your life and then we can move into specific questions and i'm a channel which information just comes through me i'm an empath which means i'm feeling what's going on for you in my physical body i'm a medium which means people's loved ones will communicate and often come through in readings and that's so my reading my personal readings are always a combo deal and even these videos are a combo deal of like what i know about astrology and what i'm getting receiving feeling about what's going down so um if you have not been doing your work Saturn can also come by and be like the teacher with the ruler slapping you on the knuckles. So you might get an ouch and a wake up uh, in this area that Aquarius rules in your chart as well. So those, those are themes for this week. Let's move into Tuesday where the moon will move into Cancer at 8.40 p.m. Now this is a definite shift of energies from the air sign and being in the brain and mind of Gemini into Cancer. I have noticed consistently when the moon moves into Cancer, people are extra emotional, extra sensitive, whether they're extra sad or depressed or angry or volatile. It's also extra psychic. And Cancer rules the fourth house in the astrological wheel, which is the house of home and mom and nurturing. And uh, Cancer is the healer. So we could have issues with our mothers coming up, even if our mothers are crossed um, or connections with our mothers. It doesn't have to be issues. We could have like beautiful connections with our mothers or women in our lives that represent that maternal goddess energy in our lives or yourself. If you are a mother, sometimes that gets highlighted. Your issues with your children come up to the forefront front often when the moon is moving through cancer. It also makes us extra psychically sensitive. All the water signs really heighten emotional sensitivity as well as psychic sensitivity. So see if you notice a difference in how you feel when the moon moves into cancer 8 40 p.m. on Tuesday the 28th. It'll be in, in cancer for a couple days. So pay attention. Do you notice that you're extra emotional? Do your dreams get extra vivid? Do the people around you get on your nerves more because they're extra volatile? Just check those things out. And again, you may be drawn to doing healing modalities or cooking. That's another cancer thing. Crafts, you know, art, energy where you've done things with your hands. That can often be cancer energy. You can also just want to duck and cover and stay home. Cancer is the crab that likes to stay inside its shell. And also, it's got those pinchers on it. So again, you can be extra pissy if someone... Um, looks either the wrong way or does something you don't really like. Now let's move to March 1st, Wednesday. This is, I think, the most beautiful transit of the week. And some people say it's the most beautiful transit of the entire year. Um, and it doesn't always happen every year. 
Venus in Aries at 12 degrees and 9 minutes and Jupiter at that exact same degree point. They're coming together. This happens at 11.35 p.m. So it's late in the day on Wednesday. But again, we can fill this transit ahead of time. We can fill this transit into Thursday. This is the conjunction of the two benefits. Venus brings good luck and benefits. Jupiter brings good luck and benefits. These two getting together in the skies is beautiful. It's really great for self-love and healing and connecting with divine love, but it's also great for love relationships. And it's a classic sign of love at first sight. And again, we could have already been feeling this over this last week. We can feel it into next week because it's such a powerful transit. Um, and some astrologers call this the most romantic day of the year. It's definitely a sweet kiss from the universe. And it's really nice when the two most beneficial planets get together in harmony with each other in Aries. And Aries is the baby of the zodiac. It's new beginnings. So there can be new beginnings in love, in relationships going on with Venus and Jupiter getting together in Aries. And again, it takes Venus like two years to go around the zodiac. So these two don't, and Jupiter takes 12 years. So they don't get together every year. So this is really very, very sweet and lovely. Wednesday, March 1st at 1135 p.m. Austin, Texas time. On Thursday, the 2nd, we have Mercury in Aquarius conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. And again, Saturn's at 29 degrees. That means Mercury also moves to 29 degrees. Now, Mercury moves pretty quickly through the zodiac. So this is a final test. It's like getting your final exam. Again, Saturn's already there going, okay, did you learn the lessons of Aquarius? And Mercury, which rules our thinking, our communications with others, also there can be, and Mercury's the messenger. So there can be like really divine inspiration, really fabulous conversations, again, rewards coming in from the universe or tests coming in. Um, we can get important insights is what I'm getting um, around the boundaries we've set up in our lives. It's also about being honest. Saturn, like once you, Saturn delivers the truth. So you can get a clear assessment of what's going on in your life with this transit as well. That happens at 8.34 a.m. on Tuesday, I'm on Thursday the 2nd. Mercury conjunct Saturn at 29 degrees of Aquarius. Really powerful. Then at 4.51 p.m., Mercury goes into Pisces. So then the messages really amp up in terms of spiritual, psychic, information like Mercury moving through Pisces brings amazing spiritual messages, psychic realizations, dreams can be off the chain. Sometimes it's hard to sleep when you're getting bombarded with messages at night because our spirit guides really do love to work with us when we're sleeping because we're the most open. So pay attention to your dreams always, but particularly when Mercury moves into Pisces and it'll be clipping through Pisces, it'll be there for the next little bit as it moves through Pisces. And I'll talk about those transits in the days and weeks to come. But um, you might notice that shift on Thursday. All right. On Friday, the moon moves into Leo at 9.15 a.m. Now, Leo rules the fifth house in the astrological wheel. This is the house of romance creativity, children. So these things can be highlighted in your life as the moon moves through Leo. Um, passion, following your passions, childhood joy, like doing things because you love it, <laughs> because it brings you joy, because you're passionate about it. We, it makes it easier to do these things. So pay attention to these. I, it's really a great time to do creative projects as well because um, Leo rules creativity. Uh, at 11.48 a.m., Venus and Aries will be conjunct Chiron and Aries. So this can bring some beautiful healing when it comes to self-love, love that you're receiving from others in relationships. This can be a very sweet, like again, Venus is so highlighted this week and bringing us love, bringing us healing. This is a really, really lovely aspect late in the morning on Friday the 3rd. Um, 
Then on Saturday, we don't have any major aspects except what the moon is doing. And the moon will be trining Jupiter. Again, another good luck bringing major insights, particularly when it comes to creative passions. And that'll happen at 10.56 a.m. Saturday morning, the 4th. At 1.38 p.m., the moon will trine Chiron. More beautiful insights around healing could come through with that. At 4.27 p.m., the moon and Leo will trine Venus. Again, more beautiful insights around love and relationships and how to love ourselves better. Um, on Sunday, then, we have Mercury, which has just moved into Pisces. It'll be at 5 degrees already by Sunday. It'll be in a sextile with the North Node in Taurus and in a trine with the South Node. So Mercury in a sextile with the North Node. The North Nodes are when we come in to learn something. Like the transiting nodes are what we're all in class collectively learning. Your North Node in your birth chart is what your soul came in to learn. So it usually delivers messages when we have beautiful relationships, especially Mercury the messenger in a sextile with a North Node. You can get some confirmation, some affirmations about are you doing your work? Are you learning? Are you on the right track? Are you learning the things you're supposed to be learning right now in your life? And then the trine with the South Node, the South, the transiting South Node is where we're collectively clearing out karma, letting go of karmic patterns. And again, the South Node in your birth chart is where you came in to clear out karmic debris and let go of things. It's also when we have aspects with the South Node, past life energies can be activated, but they're going to be activated all week because of the sun's transit through Pisces. Um, and then Mercury moving into Pisces, that can also bring in past life connections and conversations that just feel like, oh, deja vu feelings going on. Um, we also have Pluto still sitting at 29 degrees of Capricorn which is bringing up power and control issues on a daily basis. It's been going on for a while because it Pluto does not move very, very quickly. It's a wrecking ball. So it as well is at an anoretic degree in the sign of Capricorn, which is an earth sign. And it's about how we've always done things. It's the good old boys network. It's top down power over people structures. It's natural leadership. Um, and so Pluto at this degree is bringing up issues with power and control with who have you been giving your power away to? Have you been standing up in your power with yourself? People who are in prominent power positions on this planet are being tested, i.e. like Putin and Trump and other world leaders who have had like a power over or elevated themselves in a way that's not in harmony with those around them they're going to be uh, finding that their towers of Babel falling because Pluto will move into Aquarius, the sign of all humanity, beginning next month in March. Again, of course, we're moving into March um, this week, but um, in a couple weeks, Pluto will be moving into Aquarius. It'll just get to zero degrees, hang out there for a few months, rock back into Capricorn. It rocks back and forth for a little bit until it moves into Aquarius to stay for the next 20 years in November of next year, 2024. So I'm seeing this is one of the most major transits going on right now in our times because Pluto takes over 250 years to go around the entire zodiac. So none of us have seen Pluto in Aquarius in our lifetimes. So it's going to bring in new innovations when it comes to power and control issues. Uh, Pluto is also death and transformation. So wherever it is in your chart, wherever it's transiting, it is totally transforming that area of your life. It, it's like a wrecking ball. It leaves, or like the Russians in Ukraine, it just leaves everything totally bombed out and transformed. New growth can come out of something that's been leveled and knocked to the ground. So that's the beauty that we'll be moving into. But anyone and anything that's in a top-down power over paradigm will be being brought to its knees over this next year and a half. So watch and look around you in the world around you, in your personal life, in the realm of our government here in the United States, other governments around the world, and we will be seeing these structures toppling. Even corporations that are built up on a 
power paradigm of power over others. These are, this is an old paradigm. It's over. It's done. It's ending. So, and again, it's like custard's let stand. Not all of them are going to be going easily or quickly. So they're going to be trying to hold on to their power even more. And people who have power and control issues in their lives can be really rationing it up. I had a nasty interaction with a traffic cop this last week. It was like, oh my God, this guy is miserable in his life and is just, you. He, cops just walk by my window right now. <laughs> oh my God. So, um, there's most police officers are in the business in their job because they want to love and protect people but it does attract those people who want to just have power and control over others so i really suspect more police issues especially those like i said that are just trying to have power and control over others to also be rationing up that's another area where i can see things going on oh my god i can't believe cops just walked by when i said that <laughs> Sometimes I'm so psychic, I don't even know it. I'm not even aware of it as it's happening. Okay. Um, so highlighting for the week is the Venus energy and so many aspects with Venus. So bottom line, self-love. Are you doing self-care? Are you loving yourself in a real way where you value yourself? You're not looking for validation externally. That you love you right where you are, unconditionally, can you have compassion for yourself, even though you're not a finished product yet, we're all still growing and evolving and working on ourselves, can you have love and compassion for yourself in the middle of your messy life or the middle of the things that you haven't healed or shifted yet, you know, and if you're in a great place with yourself, can you have self-love without being egotistic about it and being arrogant about it, can you have divine love for yourself? Do you have a connection with the source of love, the divine? Are you tending that connection every day in a, very, very, in a valuable way? Are you spending time praying, meditating, chanting, communing with nature where you're really feeling this exquisite love that the divine universe has for you? And where? Is love showing up in your life? Are you paying attention to the love in abundance that can show up for you in your life? Is your heart open to being unconditionally loved by others? These are the questions for the week that I think you should chew on and meditate with. I hope you have a great week. Peace.